I'm going to tell you the best spells to use in Elden Ring and show you how they scale with maximum stats and explain the best equipment to use with these spells and why. Let's get right into it, okay? So to start with equipment, we're going to use a Dagger with Bloodhound step and what this does is in PvP this lets you escape from players and cast spells. In PvE, this lets you dodge boss attacks much more efficiently, get further distance from bosses, and spam them down with magic attacks. For your summon, you're going to use the Great Shield Soldier Ashes because, let's face it, putting on a tank set and putting on the Shibiri, uh, uh, what is it, Talisman, and popping out a Mimic tier just takes way too long to set up. These Great Shield Soldiers last longer than the Mimic most of the time, and they're just much faster to pop out. For talismans, a lot of people think because you play as a wizard that you need to use all damage talismans. That is completely false. If I were to use all damage increasing talismans, I'm only going to be doing maybe two to 300 more damage unbuffed per spell, and that's not really that much. You may think, well, that's a 30% increase in damage, but spells already melt bosses. The thing is, do you want to die in two hits or do you want to die in 12 hits, all right? Having all defensives makes your character so much more survivable. Right now, I'm rocking 65% damage reduction, 62% magic re damage reduction, completely unbuffed, and that can be pushed a well above 80%, and if you are spamming magic spells while having that much damage negation, you will deal way more DPS than someone that has to chug an Estus the second they get slapped around or die in two hits. In PvP, without playing defensively, you die in one hit. Other players will one-shot you with their bleed builds, but with all defensives, you will be able to survive at least five to six hits, especially at higher level PvP. I don't know about 120 or 125, I rarely play in that bracket anyway. For equipment, you may think, well, wearing the robe and wizard hat would increase your damage, the damage you get from that is so negligible, it's not ever worth getting. You want poise, you want defense, and for that you need the bull goat set, alright? Because poise allows you to continue casting through attacks, and having defense keeps you alive. Alright, now, you're gonna have two daggers, one with Bloodhound Step, one with Golden Vow, because Golden Vow is just a nice buff. Bloodhound Step, again, gives you distance from enemies, players, bosses, and so on. And also, for your finger, or your seal, you're going to use the Golden Order Seal, and I just want to talk about this one, okay? Now, this boosts fundamental incantations. There's not really much of a better seal. However, there is the Dragon Communion Seal. When comparing spell damage, this one does about five less damage than the Golden Order Seal, okay? And there is a special exception if you want to use a specific Dragon Communion spell then the Dragon Communion Seal is better overall. But in other cases, the Golden Order Seal, it does very slightly, like, just a, a fraction more damage. Okay, so either one of those is fine. Now for your Sorcery Staff, the Prince of Death Staff is the best in the game. When you have maximum stats, okay, there's so many factors on stabs. If you have no weapon upgrades, obviously the Meteorite Staff, because it can't be upgraded. If you do not have max staffs, the Azur Glintstone Staff will outperform other staffs until you have higher dexterity. However, the Lusat's Glintstone Staff is your second best choice. It does slightly less damage than the Prince of Death's Staff. Very slightly less, but it's still pretty good. I don't know all the math behind using other staffs at lower stats, but at maximum stats, the Prince of Death staff is the best in slot for your damage, but also because of one of the spells that we'll be using, it boosts death sorcery, and it is one of the better spells in the game. You can get it at the start of the game. Uh, not, not the staff, but the spell I'm going to talk about, but let, let's go ahead and, and talk about the spells now, and I want to show you what these spells are, why I've chosen them, why they're so great. Before that, let's talk about our flask real quick, our flask of physic. I just want to show you how I have it set up, okay? Mostly you'll be using Magic Shroud and Crack tier for damage, but you'll also be using the Cerulean Hidden tier. And what this does is it will make it so anything that you cast will consume no focus points, no mana at all. You just free cast. So the very first spell to take advantage of that would be Unendurable Frenzy. As long as I hold down the cast button, I'm just going to shoot out fire everywhere. And now this is mostly used for PvP. 
Now, I didn't drink the flask, so you can see my mana draining there at the top. Um, you do get a very long pass time. Now, the problem with this spell is it's not the best for PvE, okay? Secondly, it locks you into a finishing cast animation. I'm gonna go ahead and show it off now on this gargoyle. The reason I've chosen the gargoyle is he's magic resistant. He's also physically resistant. He can't be bled. He is not weak to anything or necessarily strong to anything. But this does have a nice shotgun effect. Again, this is the, one of the weaker spells for monsters. But you can see that I can just rain this down on him and it deals an okay amount of damage. However, um, it does lock me into an animation. Uh, unfortunately, I need to <laughs> unlock from him. We're gonna reset the fight so I can show off more spells. This is mostly for PvP when you're being rushed down by three melees, and you just want to give them madness and lots of damage very quickly. There is not much of a better spell for very close encounters against enemies. They won't be able to dodge it, they'll roll, they'll roll into a blast, and they're going to be, become madnessed, uh, inflicted with madness, whatever. The next spell is Pest Threads. Now, Pest Threads is one of the weaker ones, too, that I'm showing off. However, it's pretty easy to get, and it has a wild range of damage. This thing does not just deal a set amount of damage, but just watch how fast the damage racks up on this monster. I'm just going to spam it. We're not doing charge casts. Now, look at that. 400, not a big deal, right? And I'm kind of out of range, right? But look how much this is just going to ramp up crazy. Look at look at the damage now. It's It just suddenly went from 400 to 4,000. It's insane. The, the, the This spell, it's spammable. If you have summons that are distracting the boss, you're going to nuke down the boss pretty darn quickly. In PvP, you can catch people by surprise and hit them during rolls. It's not really too often you do that, though. The next spell is Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. Out of all the spells in the entire game, this is the highest DPS single casted charge spell. So what the thing is, it's kind of a dice roll, because whenever you cast it, you're going to shoot lightning all around you, kind of randomly, right? So sometimes you'll get three lightning bolts in front of you, sometimes you'll get two, and they just kind of randomly follow a trail. And depending on the size of the boss and how many lightning bolts you manage to hit in front of you, uh, is how much damage you're going to deal. You want to be about one roll or one bloodhound step away from the boss for maximum damage. So let's see, about one roll away, and that's going to be about where we're going to maximize our damage on this guy. So let's give him a charge blast and see how lucky we get. Normally I can do about four to five thousand. There we go. There's four thousand uh, in one spell cast, but you do have to charge it. Otherwise, it's it's not really the best spell. But it is an impressive spell if you want to one-shot a boss being fully buffed up. Again, these are all unbuffed and using a defensive build, okay? Next up is Ancient Death Rancor. This is basically a much better, more damaging pest threads, though it is slower and easier to see, block, and dodge. But for just monsters, this thing is uh, its crazy. So that's a regular cast. That's not a charged one, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, for more DPS, for almost every spell, you want to cast the regular spell and spam it, okay? Uh, the charge spell will deal more damage, but it takes much longer, and in the long run, you will, be, you will be dealing less damage overall. So here's a charged version, right? So that's just gonna seek him out and hit him. Uh, again, you can see it's a little bit more damage, not that big. But essentially, you just spam this at the boss. You just sit there and mash the button, and you will deal tons and tons of damage almost hit, like getting him very very low there um this is such an easy spammable spell in pvp it's hard to dodge for some people for others it's kind of easy now let's move on to meteorite of estelle i'm gonna go ahead and drink a flask and show this to you indoors this is a spell you can just channel endlessly now in pvp it's not that great because it doesn't track it just kind of nukes the area but you open up a portal above you and you just slam everything with the Okay, so I, I still have full mana because I drank that flask. I'm going to show you against this boss now. I'm only going to tickle him with the spell. I'm not going to give him a full barrage, okay? I'm just going to cast a little bit at him, and I'm just going to show you just how much damage this does. The bigger the enemy, the more damage it's going to deal. This is going to be what you mainly want to use to melt bosses, okay? So we're just going to just gonna stand here and channel some of the boss. Look, look at his health. Oh, jeez, i got to stop now. He might die. Oof, that was close, right? That's just a tiny little cast on him. Okay, and that's without a flask. So, Meteorite of Estelle, it's actually pretty hard to get that spell. It's pretty late in the game. It's not super easy to get to, but if you do have it, you can just... 
annihilate an entire area. Alright, next up is Adula's Moonblade. Now this thing is pretty interesting, right? Because you just kind of swing a, like a frosty slash and it also shoots out a blast of frost energy. The cool thing about it is that it can hit twice, but it can also hit up to four times on bigger monsters by hitting different parts of their body. Uh, it's a little hard to demonstrate without luck, but um, if you get the right distance away, the slash will hit them, the wave will hit them, and it deals very nice damage. It also causes frostbite. So, uh, in PvP, if you're getting charged by three dudes at your front, you swing this and they're all going to be hit. It's very hard to see and dodge for players. So, um, and this spell, you gotta do some quests to get it. It's not that easy to get. Next up is Shard Spiral. This is, this tracks players and monsters. This follows them as they evade, and it deals tons of damage. This is also a very good version of the Death Rancor. It's a little bit harder to get. But uh, I'm just going to do regular casts here, just like well, just like four little casts, and it's just going to just drill. <laughs> Look at how much damage that did. That, those were uncharged. Those were not charged up, those were just quick casts, and we almost nearly killed him with just four little itty bitty, itty bitty casts, right? And then find, this one's a special mention, this one is not something that I would recommend using, however, this is the hardest damaging single hit in the game is Dragon Maul. If you scale it up properly, like, I'm I'm going to show you the damage just with the regular seal that I'm using. And it's just a big dragon bite, right? So that did 2,500, which is a lot. And that's unbuffed, and that's without using any kind of talismans to increase the damage. Because the base damage of Dragon Maul is so high, you can scale this higher than any single hit in the entire game. Even a jumping double giant crusher attack can't scale nearly as high as Dragon Maul. Now, if we were to use the Dragon Communion Seal, that's going to enhance the damage further. We did 2,551. But with this seal, we're going to do even more damage, okay? And it's kind of awkward to use 2,900, so that's 400 additional base damage. And if you were to increase that by another 100% based on, you know, damage buffs, like Hall of Shabiri, you've got the Jellyfish Shield, you've got all the other damage buffs, um, you know, it, it can, you can hit this thing so hard, you could probably one-shot a lot of regular bosses in the game. Alright, so with that, with, with that shown off, let me just discuss why these spells are the ones that I've chosen as the best spells in the game, and it's, it's pretty easy to explain it here. Let's go to the spell list. Now, right away, I'm gonna talk about Shard Spiral, because that's at the top of the list. Shard Spiral is better than all of these little glint stones and comet spells. Now, there's one more spell I'm going to show off. Everyone knows this spell. It's Comet Azure. This spell is the Kamehameha of the game. The problem I have with this spell is that if a boss evades you or dodges, you're stuck shooting a beam of damage. And here's what it looks like. I'm sure everyone's seen this, but it does an insane amount of damage. The boss is going to just evade leaving me open, see, and then, you know, it's not nearly as much damage or as reliable as those other spells. It's still nice, though, if the boss is occupied with a summon and you just want to nuke it down, but those other spells will nuke it just as fast and way safer than Comet Azur. That's why I don't recommend Comet Azur. So let's talk about the spell selection here. Uh, so, Shard Spiral, why did I choose Shard Spiral over any of these? Shard Spiral out DPSs and out tracks all of these other spells, including Stars of Ruin, which was nerfed. This used to be great in PvP. The damage nerf is nerfed. Even if you use the special helmet and the staff for it, it still does less damage, so there's no point, okay? Uh, out of all the Glint Blades, the only reason to use uh, the Phalanx is for Stagger, which you don't need as a mage. You just run away and spam spells. You don't need to stagger the boss. It's fine, okay? Out of all these, like, sword abilities, you have the Frost one, which we're, we're using here, which is Adula's Moonblade. It beats all of these other ones. It beats Piercer, Great Sword, Slicer. There's no reason to use these. These Moon spells, they hit hard, but they have such a long wind-up, they're a waste of casts. The Ambush Shard and Night Shard, Night Comet abilities, are great because... The AI won't dodge them, and players, it's really hard for them to block or dodge, but they don't deal that much damage, and it leaves you open because the cast time's a little bit longer, and it's just not worth using. I'm not talking about utility spells in this video. These fire spells all suck, they deal crappy damage, and they're hard to hit enemies. In PvP, the cast time is, the windup's too stupid, it sucks. Alright, 
Um, as far as the Shattering and the Crystal Rain ones, people just move out of the way. Monsters just move out of the way. They don't deal enough damage to be worth it. Collapsing Stars is actually really good for PvP, and that's really about it. But it's not any better than Ancient Death Rancor. Um, the, what was the spell called here again? This one is Shard Spiral. There's just no reason to use Collapsing Stars over Shard Spiral and Ancient Death Rancor. Uh, and then Meteorite is just a weaker version of Meteorite of Estelle. A much, much weaker version, mind you. Uh, the Bubble Spells are awful. The Thorns are awful. Rancor Call is just a weaker version of, of Ancient Death Rancor. But Ancient Death Rancor is easy to get. You kill a Death Bird for it at the start of the game. Easy to get. Explosive Ghost, Ghost Flame, not very good in PvP or PvE. The Mist stability, the Tibia Summons takes too long for a wind-up. This Black Blade, it's kind of cool because it deals percent maximum HP on the first hit and that's it. It's got a long wind-up. These Ring Spells have horrible DPS. Alright, Lightning Spear does okay damage, but it's got a long wind-up and it doesn't... It's just, the DPS overall is low. The single hit, it's nice, but other than that, it kind of sucks. Call Flame, or Catch Flame, is actually really, really good for enemies weak to fire damage, and that's about it. Out of all the fire spells, for whatever reason, Catch Flame is one of the higher DPS ones because you can spam it. Alright, but other than that, these fire spells, they're not very useful. Even against enemies with fire resistance, uh, Catch Flame is still your best bet, sadly. Alright. Then you have, like, the beast abilities, like the Beast Claw, um, you have the Bestial Sling and the Rock, the Stone of Gr Grink? I don't know how to say that. The DPS is lower than any of the other spells I've showcased, even if you fully buff it with their specialty seals and the little dagger you can get. It's just not good. Blood Flame Talons, it's close range, the damage sucks. Blood Boon, the damage sucks. Um, it, for bleed, there's way better ways to bleed, like Swarrow Flies, for example. Alright, um, now, talking about, uh, these spells. The Flame of Frenzy is clearly outclassed by an unendurable Frenzy. Alright, now, Frenzied Burst is a sniper skill. There's a lot of meme vids where you can enter stealth, shoot someone with a beam, and it deals like a thousand damage. It's kind of funny, but the damage just isn't there. The wind-up and cast time sucks for just PvE. It sucks for when people are rushing you down, if they know how to counter it. Um, it's awful. You don't want to use this. And Inescapable Frenzy, that's a grab that deals five crits. If you can, deal, if you can grab someone, they're going to die. Uh, now, the dragon spells, these are all, they all pale in comparison for damage and wind up and cast time. They, the only thing that's good is Rotten Breath um, because of its utility. Uh, uh, Placidux Ruin is just awful in terms of aiming. It just shoots it all over the place. It's completely unreliable. Dragon Claw is just a crappier version of Dragon Maul. It's a much, much crappier version. So that's every spell in the game, and my picks for the best spells, my picks for the best equipment, you definitely want to go defensive, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, again, go all defense, use the great shield of soldier ashes on bosses if you, you don't really need it, because once you have these plus 25s, plus 10s, alright, um, you're going to just absolutely smash through all the content with these spells. So, with that said... We can just go and nuke this boss now, except I want to use them to make more videos, so I'm actually not going to. But, again, this will showcase the spells without buffs. If you buff Flame, Grant Me Strength, Golden Vow, if you want to swap out your defenses for offensives, um, like one of the better offensives that's actually worth using, if you use Charge Spells as a Godfrey Icon, but also the Ritual Sword Talisman does boost your spell damage enormously. The Magic Scorpion Charm boosts your spell damage a, a good amount, but stuff like uh, Graven Mass Talisman, which potency of sorceries or potency of incantations, these suck. They're really hard to get. There's a long quest chain to get these. They barely increase your damage at all. They're just not worth using ever, okay? So with that said, have fun out there. Go spam your favorite spell on these bosses. I think Pestereds are great because this it, it, it can just really stack up the damage on players and monsters like crazy. Except I always cast it out of range. So, but if you're up close, just look, it follows them, man. It's it's crazy and I don't have the right spell out. I wanted to have Bloodhound Step. Just Bloodhound Step all the attacks, hit them with that Pestereds. It's a quick recovery, so you can always dodge afterwards. Again, this makes the game incredibly easy. And Pest Threads is the weaker version of out of all these spells. Look, look at that. One casted 3,000 damage. I don't know why or how. Maybe it's hitting them in the eyeballs or something. But Pest Threads, it's, it's a sleeper spell. 
uh, again guys, these are the best spells. Just go ahead and get them. Have fun with the game. Uh, make sure you drink that flask so you can just literally spam meteors into bosses' faces. I mean, no boss is going to survive this more than a few seconds. And you can sit here and hold this for a very long time while you blow up the entire arena, kill all their ads if they summon things. It's just, it's crazy. Alright, so go out, have some fun, get these spells, and I'll see you in the next video. Videos every day on this channel. I'm Swole Benji, thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscribe, hit me up with a channel membership. Five bucks a month, it's like being a Twitch sub, you get special private videos. Again, love you guys so much. Come on back tomorrow for another video. Let's take care.